everyone it's Ross in today's video we are going to be showing you guys my fig trees that are rooting inside the grow closet this year we're rooting about 170 of these and we have another shelf that we've yet to fill but you can see down in here we're getting some nice progress and a lot of people would probably see something like this and say oh I've succeeded I did it the time to post photos on Facebook. Yet, in reality, we have a very long way to go. And I would recommend that just because you got to this stage doesn't mean you can kind of uh, slack off. In fact, this is the time until we get to this stage here that I'm just now watering for the first time. So we originally put the soil in these pots pretty moist not wet not dry moist and then what we decided to do was root that root this cutting in that pot and then since then it's been about a month i haven't watered these uh these pots and if you were to water these guys too much you would get a situation where there's a lot of rot and i want to show you guys an example of that if we look down here here is a cutting that has rotted um the bark is coming off it's really not a pretty cutting. It's pretty mushy at this point. I can bend the cutting in any which way I choose. Um, and if I were to dig around the soil, the soil would certainly be moist. It probably wouldn't be too wet. But this was a cutting here, and the reason why this failed, I want to mention, is that this was a green cutting. I took a bunch of green cuttings this year. You can see some of them are in bags, their own little humidity bin, because what they do is these green cuttings they're not fully hardened. They're pretty uh, weak, maybe even soft wood or semi-soft wood. Um, this stuff kind of leafs out earlier than you would hope. And because it leafed out so early, it hadn't developed a root system just yet. And that's what the bag is for, to kind of help this new stem that came out of here. Uh, give it some time, like this one here, to then send out a new leaf and develop roots. Um, sometimes you can't just help it, you know, the, if the cutting's rotting from the bottom up, you got yourself a problem. Here's another example over here. This one's probably not going to make it. But I imagine that these two here will certainly make it. We did a video showing you guys kind of what to expect before the frost comes in. And I took a lot of these cuttings. I took not a lot of them. I took a few of these cuttings in here and mostly the ones you see that are bagged. We took them before the frost came in when things really weren't that hardened. I wouldn't sell those cuttings, I wouldn't trade those cuttings. It's just something like, you know, this takes a little bit more skill, a little bit more energy, a little bit more attention. We'll see if we can get these to work and if they work then, you know, that's great. But if not, then you got something like this and you, you know, you won't have a uh, happy customer or a happy um person you traded with so but for the most part a lot of these guys are rooting out they're leafing out and it really hasn't been that long you know I want to consider at this point watering most of these you can water them from the top up or the top down but uh, once a lot of these things start rooting and I may move things around right so if this one here hasn't shown any life just yet I may take this one and put them in a different bin you know, I may, I may stick them down here and I may stick the ones that are showing life and put them all in the same bin. And then that way, if they're all in the same bin, I can just water the bottom of the bin. Take my watering can and just dump a whole bunch of water in there. And that way they're being watered from the bottom up. And it just makes watering a lot easier. I don't know if there's really that much of a benefit of, to watering from the bottom up or from the top down. I think it's just an easier way to do it. but. This is kind of where we're at. You know, a lot of people, like I said, would look at this and say, oh, we've succeeded. But really, we have three months. Um, in my situation, I have four months left before I'm going to be starting to, uh, you know, harden these guys off, adjust these to the humidity that's outside, adjust them to the sunlight, you know, the wind, um, all kinds of things. We need to adjust these and then we can put them outside in May. And that's really four months from now. So. Um, these are going to spend a lot of time in here. We're going to get to the point where these these cuttings will actually probably get to the very top of this. We'll have to put the, the light even higher. 
you know we have a lot of uh, a lot of mistakes that can happen left to go and if you guys don't pay close attention I don't want to say baby them I don't want to say wa over water them because that's usually what we tend to do is pay too much attention but pay cl you know close attention to pests you know there's very little fungus gnats in here um, if any and I think a lot of that has to do with these rice holes they're not getting in there what they are doing is they're getting into the bottom of these bins if there's any organic matter at the bottom of the bin it's staying wet and the fungus mats love that but for the most part these guys are doing really well there's nothing really bothering them you're just keeping an eye out don't count your chickens just yet and um, you know good luck to everyone so I hope everyone enjoyed this one if you got questions on what's gonna happen I guess next or any other questions regarding the rooting process let me know down in the comments I'll be definitely be sure to answer them um, so yeah, I'll talk to you all soon. Take care, guys.